Good morning, Wooten students. It's Miss Cipriano in the library in the Everybody Book section. And I am going to read a book from that area that's really for third, fourth, and fifth graders. So have fun. And I know we just had Easter, but I just thought it'd be fun to read about bunnies. I'm also going to include a, um, for your teachers, if they want to show you a, um, a video about drawing a bunny. So that's always fun. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Okay, students, so show and tell bunnies. Well, now we're here. Now Miss Cipriano is going to go back to my office because, and it's kind of a boring green, but we are going to be okay with that. And I want everybody to know that we are going, when you come to the library for music and things like that, you are going to get some, some books, nonfiction books that are about real events. So Show and Tell Bunnies by Katherine Lasky, illustrated by Marilyn Hafner. And where are the bunnies? Talk to your class and tell me why. Why do you think that? Okay, so I see backpack. That's one clue. Give me, let talk to your class about other clues about where we are. Okay, these are called lockers. You'll see those if you're fifth graders when you go to middle school, okay? I think they've got them. Okay, and we're going to give a big, big, big thank you to Candlewick Press, the publisher of the book, because um, they're the ones who made the book for us, Show and Tell Bunnies. Now, what? okay, we can infer the, the bunny's doing something. What is he doing? What can we infer? It looks like he's looking for something he's looking for something i believe clyde was worried show and tell was two days away and he had nothing to bring to school his best friend rosemary had brought her coronation queen benjamin doll and lawrence had brought a picture of his aunt who was an astronaut but clyde had nothing that special he rummaged around his room searching now you know what rummage and search are similar when you move through something and you're looking that's called rummaging there was a little creature that clyde had made out of acorns with twigs for arms and legs that there was a gray rock that looked almost like a heart and in his desk drawer there was a scrapbook of his favorite leaves then clyde rolled his string collection out from under his bed now students i know we don't necessarily have show and tell but I know at the beginning part of your day when you're talking to your classmates and maybe you're still at home, you could show, you know, what, what kind of um, treats you got on Sunday or things like that. So I know you're a little old for show and tell, but I still think you're showing your friends some cool things you have. So he's looking through his stuff. You're not going to take that to school to show and tell, his older brother Jefferson said with a sigh. I might, Clyde said in a small voice. It's about the size of a basketball. My friend Harry's is the size of, of a basketball. Oh, said Clyde. Why don't you bring your monster card collection, Clyde? His mother suggested. Every Student brings monster cards, Mom, Jefferson said. Ah, oh, it was true, Clyde thought. What about your leaf scrapbook, said Clyde's mother. Leaves, muttered Jefferson. Look, Clyde has to start collecting something special. If you love something, Clyde's mother said, then it's special. And Clyde can tell them why. Clyde wasn't so sure he could. Now, looking what mom has in her hands, what does she like, maybe? And she's got something here. She likes to plant flowers, it looks like. Maybe he'd get sick before show and tell. He had a queasy feeling in his stomach. Mom, he called, bring the thermometer. I think I'm coming down with something. 
You know, Clyde, his mother said, your great grandmother used to have a wonderful thermometer collection. Where is it now, Clyde asked. Oh, who knows? Probably lost or given away, said his mother. What's my temperature? Normal, dear, Clyde moaned. Now, boys and girls, we can get nervous about different things. We had the tell pass and stars coming up. I'm telling you, don't be nervous. Just do the best you can. And if, if it's hard and you, yeah, I'm just saying, do your best you can and don't worry about it. At school the next day, things got worse. What are you going to bring for show and tell tomorrow? Betty asked. Don't know yet, Clyde answered. What are you bringing? My grandfather's false teeth. Cool, said all the kids. False teeth, Clyde thought. That was special, all right. Look, there they are. We call false teeth dentures. What's Ralph bringing, asked another first grader. Clyde squeezed his eyes shut and hoped Ralph would bring something incredibly boring. Please let Ralph bring monster cards, he whispered to himself. A fossil, Ralph answered. Actually, a dinosaur toe bone. My uncle's a, pa a paleontologist. I even have a picture of him digging for dinosaurs. Look at that. Oh, man, it looks like everybody's got something cool. Clyde nearly cried out in despair. Don't worry, Clyde, whispered Rosemary. I'll help you find something good for show and tell. Aw, now, boys and girls, that's a friend right there willing to help, right? And do we want to be that? Yes. At recess, Clyde and Rosemary went all over the playground looking for interesting things Clyde could bring. Okay, outside. And did you hear? Students, there's a fox outside. Now, you couldn't bring that into the um, school, but maybe you could catch a picture. They were still looking when they walked home from school, but they found nothing. Absolutely zero. Clyde was getting desperate. Now, there's a word we don't hear a lot. Desperate. Clyde was getting desperate. Okay, he's looking everywhere. He wants something for show and tell. Those are the clues we know so far. So what does desperate mean? Talk to your classmates. What does it mean to be desperate? You're really wanting something and you're just going to go to any means to find it. <laughs> when he got home, Okay, he's heading down into the basement. What do you think he might be looking for? Remember something earlier in the story? Okay, when he got home, he decided to look in the basement for his great-grandfather's thermometer collection. Maybe it hadn't been given away after all. The basement, basement was dark and dusty and creepy with cobwebs and shadows. Clyde hated it. He never went down there alone. He didn't want to ask Jefferson to come. He poked through boxes and piles of old clothes. Then he saw a round, gray, furry object. Something just drew Clyde to this lopsided little ball. When he touched it, it was soft and very fragile. Clyde found a box and placed the little ball gently inside. Now, students in Texas, we don't have basements because our you go a few feet down and you hit rock. And you, it's really hard to build basements here. That's why the Texas State Capitol is so special because they have, they have a basement. Cost took a lot of time and a lot of money to do it. Now, boys and girls, we don't know what that was that he put in the box. And they don't even show us in the pictures. So let's see. So Clyde, the big day is here. And Jeff said Jefferson the next morning, what's it going to be for show and tell? I'm not telling Clyde, said quietly. Oh, that'll be good. Not telling it, show and tell. I'm not telling you, Jefferson. Jefferson, you keep quiet. Maybe he wants it to be a surprise or private. Yeah, a private surprise. That's it, said Clyde. Clyde walked to school. 
carrying his box very carefully. All morning, he waited for show and tell. Mrs. McFuzz called on Betty first. Her grandfather's false teeth were a big hit. She made them go chop, chop and let all the students hold them. Everyone loved Ralph's dinosaur toe. It was almost as big as a leg. Finally, it was Clyde's turn. He stood up and took a deep breath. I found this in our basement, he said, opening the box. I don't know what it is. He swallowed and couldn't think of anything else to say. It's a mystery object, Mrs. McFuzz said. Sometimes they're the most exciting. Okay. Clyde smiled a little and said to the class, it's very fragile, but if you want to touch it, you can very carefully. A hush fell over the room as each student came up to touch the lopsided furry ball. Okay. There they go. When show and tell was over, Mrs. McFuzz put the box on the windowsill. Well, I think they liked it, maybe, Clyde whispered to Rosemary. But by lunch, everyone had forgotten about the furry lopsided ball. They were talking about Barry, Betty's grandfather's false teeth and Ralph's dinosaur toe. No one asked Clyde about his mysterious object. Now, students, what is that mysterious object? Oh, let's see. After lunch, Rosemary said, don't feel bad, Clyde. I think your show and tell is great. Let's go and look at your furry ball again. She walked over to the window in the classroom. Miss McFuzz, come quick. Clyde, get over here, Rosemary yelled. My word, exclaimed Mrs. McFuzz. In the box were hundreds of tiny Baby, can you guys see? Spiders. Wow, Clyde gasped. Spiderlings, whispered Mrs. McFuzz. Come quick, everyone. Come and see Clyde's mystery object. The spiderlings were crawling out of the box toward the window. Mrs. McFuzz opened it wide. Watch, everyone. Watch carefully. The spiderling closest to the window spun out a long stream of silk. A breeze came and caught the silk, lifting the little spider like a balloon. Away it sailed, right out of the classroom window. Then another spiderling and another sailed away. Everyone watched and kept count for nearly an hour. 244 spiderlings left on the warm breezes. 244 times the whole class wave goodbye. Wow, and there they go. No one said another word about Betty's grandfather's false teeth or Ralph's dinosaur toe. toe. All they talked about were spiderlings and spinnerets and silk and egg sacs. Mrs. McFuzz wrote the new words on the blackboard and everyone drew pictures of ballooning spiders and copied down the wonderful new words. Clyde, Rosemary said, you brought the best show and tell of all. It was much better than my Queen Benjamin doll. And Mrs. McFuzz gave Clyde a hug when he said goodbye and whispered a special thanks in his ear. That night at dinner, Jefferson said, well, Clyde, how did show and tell go? Did anyone bring monster cards? Nope. Ralph bought a fossil, a dinosaur toe bone. Wow, how did they like your private surprise about seeing a million year old after seeing a million year dinosaur toe? Well, they liked it. It was a surprise, all right. Big deal, muttered Jefferson. Clyde ignored him. He told his family about the furry lopsided ball he had found in the basement and showed them the, spot, the picture he had drawn of the ballooning spiders. They were 244 spiderlings in all. Clyde said, goodness, Clyde's parents said together, and they looked at wonder at Clyde. What did your teacher say about that? Now, students, you know, I think the challenge is going to be draw your spiders and the flying spiderlings. That would be a cool drawing. Life, said Clyde. Mrs. McFuzz said, I brought life.
Oh, now, you know what? That has a double meaning, I think. Now, what's one way that he brought life? Well, he brought a ball that ended up being a bunch of spiders that were alive. That's life. What's another way we could use the word life here? He brought excitement and activity and fun to the classroom. That's bringing life. So cool. Um, show and tell bunnies. N never too old for a picture book. Students, I hope you enjoyed that. And you know what? I saw encouragement. I saw, you know, try a new thing. And you know what? Those are all good things for each one of us. So boys and girls, I hope I see you in the hall. I see you in the library when you come into music and or when you're online. Have a great day, my Wooten students. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Bye, boys and girls, students, great students from Wooten.